Hi, I'm Justin Snedden from the AR team at Niantic, and today I'm going to walk you through how to set up ARDK and get it running for one of your projects. So what we'll do is we'll start by going over to the developer portal, so lightship.dev, uh, log in, and then click on the download section. From here, you can grab the ARDK itself by just clicking on this download link here, and you can also download the examples because we'll use those just to walk through uh, opening an actual project that, that does something uh, straight away. Now, while they're downloading, uh, quickly jump over to the minimum requirements. We use the Unity 2019 uh, LTS versions for development, so just make sure that you've got one of those installed on your computer. Uh, if you don't, just go and download one from Unity. Uh, another thing to note is if you are developing on M1 Max, we need a, you to apply a patch. So at the moment, uh, the support for some of the, the tooling is not there. So if you go here, click on troubleshooting, and you'll see that if you scroll down a little bit further, we just have some instructions on how to apply this patch just here developing for m1 max there's just a zip file that you'll need to download and drop into the uh, folder where ardk is so basically it'll override a bunch of files and uh, start and then you restart unity and it should hopefully all work for you once that's all downloaded for you you'll have uh, a few files like this you'll have the uh, unity package for the ardk and you'll have one for the examples just keep them handy so we'll then jump over to unity and we'll make a new project. So go into here, click new. You'll have a bunch of templates over here. You can use different ones if you want to. There's just a few settings that you'll need to tweak depending on which one you pick. I'm gonna pick mobile 3D, and let's just call this uh, ARDK examples. Uh, Unity will now do what it does, so it'll take a few seconds to spool up that project. Okay, so Unity's loaded now. So the first thing we wanna do is basically just set up the uh, build settings to say that we are building for a particular device. Again, that's over on a different screen. We can here. Uh, we just pick whichever one you're gonna use first. I'm gonna run through both of them. So I'll start with iOS, so I'll switch the platform. First, right click here, import package, and select the ARDK package. So you downloaded two, we'll get ARDK first, and then you'll get a pop-up window that is asking you to import everything. So just say yes to all. And at this point, uh, you have everything you would need to start building your own project. But because that would take a lot longer, and we have other tutorials for walking you through those things, I'm just going to import our entire examples package. It's a very good place to uh, start because you can pick through the code and work out how we did things. So import custom package and select the examples. Again, you'll get the pop up. Just say yes to everything. Okay, now all of that has been imported. So what you can see here is the ARDK folder. In here is all of the, the, the actual ARDK systems. And then here's the examples we just pulled in. There are a whole bunch of different ones for you to look through over time as you're learning different parts of the system, whether it's networking, meshing, semantics, depth. There's all sorts of things in here. And there's even a few entire games that you can put onto your device and test like Pong here. So just for the sake of it, I'll open one of these so that we can see what this looks like. So I'll open semantic segmentation, one of the easier ones to explain. Something that is very cool within uh, ARDK is everything's mockable inside the editor itself, which means you can develop a lot of things directly in Unity and then test them on the phone periodically to make sure that they work on device so that you save some of those cycles of building to a device continually. If I run this, I'm probably going to get some errors, which I'll show you how to fix. When I run this, I'll hit go, and yes, I, I get a warning down here. And what that's basically telling me is, oh, you didn't put in your license key. So if I switch to the console, I couldn't find an ARDK auth file. And it just says it needs to be in this folder. So what we do is we go to the root and we make this folder. So create a folder called resources. And then we go into this folder and we go create another folder called ARDK. And then in here, we create from the ARDK menu, the ARDK auth config. So this file just has a, a string location here that you need to fill in. You get that key by going back to the developer portal. And then just clicking on the dashboard link here. And you'll see there's a license key setup area. If you haven't already filled this in, then you'll go ahead and do it. Otherwise, you'd have a license key here that you can copy. Um, just basically add your app name, hit create, and it'll give you a nice long string. I'm not going to do that because otherwise I'll be putting a new license up there for, for people. But you can go ahead and do that and just copy that and then jump back over to Unity. You would put that in here. I'm just going to put 
this there for now and I'll switch that out off screen. Uh, so you know, save that. We, when we run this still, the key is needed for when you go to device. Some of the mocking systems will actually work uh, now as is. But if I press this, uh, what should have happened is every time I hit this button saying sky, so things that are marked as sky should have highlighted to say, oh, I, I found that as the sky. It, but it's not working and that's because there's another error message which will say ARDK mock layer is missing. This is the setup for this uh, mock scene. And as you can see, the layer is missing because I, I have created a new project which didn't have that set up by default. So we, what we want to do is just add a layer here and that will be called ARDK underscore mock world. It's exactly what the error message tells you to do. So you quickly come in here and then because this is a hierarchy of objects, we just want to make sure that they're all in that layer. So let's just select it again and then tell Unity, yes, change everything. So that when we run this in editor, we, we get uh, the mocked system running. So when I change channels, so sky, the background was sky, and these little boxes have all been set up for one of the various channels that you can pick. So as you cycle through, it just sort of says, well, that stuff's ground. Uh, this is uh, artificial ground, so uh, bitumen, pavements, those sort of things. Uh, water, buildings, and foliage, so trees, and grass. And uh, they're, they're the channels that we've got that you can mock in the system at the moment. As more come online, you'll be able to see more. Very quickly, how that all works is if you just look at one of these objects, there's a little script here that just says what, what channel do we think this is. So it will... Uh, through Unity, pass that through. There are other examples in here that you can just open and play with. So there's another one for depth. Uh, if we run that, this also has similar mocking things. So here's a little scene. There's this cube that can be placed within the scene wherever you'd like. I can toggle depth to show what uh, the simulated depth. This is just returning what Unity says the depth is from a real camera. It'll return the uh, camera from our machine learning model and depth of the real world. But what it means is in here, I can actually test uh, what my code is doing. So uh, this example is just placing that little little plumb bulb on anything where it thinks how far away the, that, that wall is or the floor is and there's a button for placing the cube itself so the cube will snap to wherever you put the little plumb bulb which is quite nice and this example when we run it on a phone will just work so I'll leave it on this one and let's build for device. So there's a couple of other settings that you're going to need before this will work building directly with device. It's more Unity settings than it is ARDK ones. So let's go back into the build settings. For iOS in particular, when we bring up player settings, remember first you set up your company as you would normally do, whatever you want to call this project. Uh, when you scroll down though, uh, you're going to need to do two things because you're building for iOS. So you will need to fill in your device signing information, which again, I'll do off screen later and uh, also make sure that you're setting a camera usage description. So for iOS, you need to put this here in Unity. So just say required for AR. And that will mean when the permissions uh, pop-ups come up, it'll actually work on phone because it'll say, hey, this, we need to use the camera. Uh, and this is, this is why. Close that out. And then we can basically build. So if we hit uh, build and run or control B, however you'd, you would like to, to do that, it'll pop up because this is the first time, it'll ask me where to put it. So builds just so that we've got a folder that we can easily uh, remove from our uh, git with git ignore or whatever way of ignoring stuff for your particular code system is. Uh, and then yeah, away we go. And that will spool up Xcode because this is building for iOS and uh, then take a minute or two while it does what it does. Which is why I was saying the mocking system's great because uh, as you'll see when you go to build in this way, it takes you know a minute or two for Unity to compile what it needs to give it to Xcode to compile what it needs to then get it onto your phone. Also at this point, remember to plug in your phone, plug in your iOS device and unlock it so that it will actually work. And yes, you might get some permissions pop up, it's fine, just asking about folder access. And here comes Xcode. And yeah, it, it's detected my phone and it's starting to build away. If it didn't pick up your phone, just make sure to select it and you can always hit uh, build from there. When building in uh, Xcode, if you get this uh, sat in indexing continually, what this is is when we gave permissions to use the, that folder on the desktop, there's still something not quite right on your Mac. You just need to restart 
for, for the Mac itself to realize that folder is accessible. So you, you want to go ahead and, and recite your Mac. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll just uh, keep going and we'll jump back into setting up for Android and running. And switch over to Android. So just switch the platform. Okay, we've got Android here. Go into the settings. We are going to need to change a few things. So for Android, I recommend you remove Vulkan because some devices will, it just won't work. So we'll remove that if it's there. Then scroll down a little bit further and we need to change the uh, version of Android that we're using. So KitKat is too old. It doesn't have all of the libraries we need. So I recommend jumping to around 10. Uh, that'll that'll definitely work for most devices. The other thing we need to change is that we need this to build for 64-bit. So when we look here, it'll say ARM7, we want ARM64, which means we need to change this scripting backend to not be mono, to be IL2 CPP. So we do that, we can then select ARM64. And once we've done this, uh, we are ready to build for Android. So we can close this and we can hit build again. Uh, you will need to plug in your Android device, obviously. Uh, it will ask you for what you want to call the the, the, uh, the APK that it makes, so it'll start building. I'm probably going to get an error in a minute because I haven't actually plugged in my Android device, but if I had, it would just build and then launch directly onto, yes, there you go, uh, launch directly onto the device itself. When you do uh, plug in your Android device, make sure that you have set it up to be in developer mode and that you have enabled US debugging. So when you unlock it, It'll pop up and say, hey, we need USB debugging. Just say USB debugging, just say yes. And then once you've done that and you uh, build again, uh, it should happily work and launch on your phone. Now, just quickly, when you run one of these examples, there's one more error message that we want to get rid of. So if you see down here, it, it will be saying that, hey, there's two of these uh, auth configs. The reason for this is when I imported the examples package, it already had an auth config file in there. You're only allowed to have one, which is why you, you get this uh, error message. So all we need to do here is quickly uh, go into here, search for that uh, file. So there's two of them there, and we just get rid of the, the one that we didn't put our key into. So we just get rid of this one, and then it'll work fine. So when I run uh, this, no more error message. So the last thing we'll do is comp in some footage from running on the actual device that you can see here. That's it. It's very straightforward and very easy to get AIDK up and running. So hopefully you enjoy digging into our examples and have a great day.